Well, thank you for joining us for our evening session of uh, Budget Committee, which it continues. Uh, and I'm going to ask uh, the clerk to do roll call so we make sure we have quorum here. Through you, Mr. Mayor, and members of the committee, the following members of Budget Committee are present in person. Um, uh, Mayor Brown as chair, uh, Deputy Mayor Singh, Councillor Power, Councillor Keenan, Councillor Pileshi, Councillor Santos. Members of, online are Councillor Fortini, Councillor Brar, Councillor Tour, and Councillor Medeiros. And Councillor Vasante is in person as well, so all members are present, Mr. Chair. Um, okay, uh, thank you. Um, so we have um, quorum, and we will have our first public delegation, which is from the Brampton Candidates Girls Hockey Association. And we have Joshua Semut, Tina Kellaway, Stuart Mackey, Michaela Grant Mentis. Mr. Mayor, Council, how's everybody? A uh, couple changes in who's coming. Um, they couldn't make it. Michaela's a pro in Buffalo, and the snowstorm kept her in Buffalo, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And uh, Stuart's a principal in Brampton, and he couldn't get out of school, just so you know. Can we request a little bit more time? Is that possible? I see a motion from Councillor Pileshi and Santos. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Next slide, please. Oh. You might have. There you go. You can keep going. Two more. Keep going, yeah. Perfect. We just wanted to talk about the future of the Brampton candidates here in Brampton and uh, what we've had over the last 60 years being one of the longest, uh, I believe we're the fifth longest in the country and the longest in Ontario for women's hockey. Uh, this year obviously being Women's World here in Brampton is a huge plus for everybody um, and what we plan to future grow here, which I'd like to show you guys coming up. Next slide, please. So obviously we have some Olympians here that came through Brampton, um, which we have reached out to each and every single one of them, thanks to Cheryl Pounder. Um, and they have all agreed to put their name on the wall um, in the future change room we wish to build here in the organization. So we will hopefully have a legacy fund, if you will, the legacy of what was here for the past 60 years and what we um, intend to build. Obviously I put Hazel for what she built just next door, which you guys are gonna see in a little bit. Next slide, please. This is the platform we have. These are the most recent players and people that have made it to the national program or at the collegiate level. The top three is the exposure we have um, on a professional setting. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. This one you can click each one, Peter. So these are our competition, our neighbors, um, what we fight up against all the time to retain players and, and, and continue to grow the game of women's hockey. Next slide, please. Oh, you might have to click it twice, yeah. You can click it three times, this one. So this is what we're up against. This is next door. This is what Hazel helped to build. Next slide, please. Uh, you can do this one three times, Peter. So that's currently what Mississauga has. Next slide, please. Uh, three times as well on this one. Next slide as well. This one is twice click, perfect. I just want to show everyone this is what we were up against on a daily basis trying to compete against. That's the purpose of these pictures. You can go to the next slide, please. This is a video. You can one click it. Perfect. Next slide, please. Right, a be yeah. This one here, this is what the mayor of Kingston and council members did for them. You can play the video. Perfect. And this one is another one. And this is what we currently use at Century Gardens, our home facility. It's, it's, it's all right. I mean, we've made do. That's a video. That's me doing video with our team. 
You can play that video. Here we go, you ready to start? Yeah. Compared to what we just saw in the last couple of slides. <laughs> and I, I, that's not staged, guys, I promise. That is legitimately how we do things. Uh, next slide, please. We have a relatively nice door, but we have a not so nice of a stick rack. <laughs> uh, next slide, please. This is a video. Um, this is our current junior room. You can mute myself. It's... Sorry for the terrible video quality. Uh, definitely not a media student. That's our current room compared to what everyone else uses. You can skip to the next slide. That's what we're proposing. Next slide, please. This is a video as well. Yeah. There's no volume to this one. This is what we're proposing um, to be this on the same playing field as everybody else, so we can keep Brampton residents here playing in Brampton. Um, over the years, we've lost numerous amount of participants to neighboring cities for these exact reasons. And for the first time, um, being the future here in Brampton for the next 60 years, we're hoping for. Uh, I watched all of the delegation videos over the last couple of days. I've never done this before, and it's nerve-wracking as heck. And then so I turned around and watched all the videos, and the one thing that stuck out to me was building a foundation for the future. It's exactly what I'm asking all members of council to invest in. This is the future of women's sports and inclusion. Um, you can skip to the next slide. Next slide. This is what we currently use where the coaches get changed. This is our storage room. You can mute me. I mean, unless you want to hear me, it's up to you guys. Not very big. It's a broom closet, closet, but we make do. As of right now, this is where the coaches currently get changed. You can skip the slide. And then... This is what we're asking it to look like. Next slide. And next slide. Next slide. Please. Perfect. The last thing I'll just close with is... We have an opportunity now in, in, in Brampton women's hockey, especially being 60 years, Brampton Worlds. Um, we also have the opportunity to host some professional women's hockey teams here in the city for their training camps and, and things along these lines. However, we need the facilities in place to do so, which we feel is huge to um, help build a legacy for future generations to, to come into sports and, and play in the organization. Do you want to add anything to you? Yeah, we're just looking to be the future for, for girls and women's hockey so that instead of going to the surrounding leagues, they choose to come here and stay within Brampton. That's all, thank you. Thank you for uh, that excellent presentation. And we've got a number of uh, speakers um, for questions. Councillor Pileschi, followed by Councillor Keenan, followed by Councillor Santos. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for the delegation. Um, I'll start by saying it's, uh, it's nice that you, you recognized uh, Hazel. Um, there was no bigger supporter of women's hockey in the city of Brampton than Susan Fennell. So that's the picture that I want up there. If you're putting pictures up there, Susan was a huge supporter of women's hockey. Um, I don't know, anytime you guys delegate, you never, well, sometimes you mention it, but you don't mention it enough. We have the largest women's tournament in the world. And, you know, that should be a massive showcase whenever we're talking about the candidates. I'm a big supporter of the candidates. Um, I will have questions for staff, but I will ask you, um, are you guys planning on putting any skin in this? Absolutely. And? Which I've done every year since I've been with the candidates. Okay. And for this new, this new yep. room? I work every day tirelessly to find sponsors, myself included, are happily yep. willing to open up my checkbook and help out where I can. Okay. I noticed that you showed fans in there. In the room? Yeah. Does it get hot in there? Or it, is it... You have to, or the equipment gets moldy. Okay. So it's... the equipment stores there as yes. well? Yes. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Um, I like it. I, I wish it was bigger. I'll Me be too. asking staff if we have more space or anything like that. And I'll I be tried. asking staff you some could, other I questions. You could. I like that. <laughs> um, We're but yeah, limited I like the... to the facility, right? I'm sorry? We're limited to what the facility offers. Yeah, we move walls <laughs> here and there. We're, We're open to that. I like the way you think, so... <laughs> That's what sledgehammers are for. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your delegation. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councillor Keenan. Uh, thank you so much for the delegation. <laughs> um, my uh, daughter uh, plays in 
for the candidates and the, the U9, uh, U9 rep team. Um, so this is great to see. It's great to see uh, how much women's hockey has grown. Um, I'm in this rec center multiple times a week, um, and I would I would love to see what is happening here come to fruition and, and be done. And uh, similar to Councillor Pelleschi, I'd like to see it bigger. I would I would like to see the Brampton candidates' little video being posted in other cities saying this is what we want to be. Um, so I'm fully supportive of this. Um, in every way, shape, and form. So thank you so much for your delegation. You. <clears throat> Councillor Santos. Thank you so much, and, and through you, um, Mr. Chair, it's amazing what you do for not just the community, but for women in sport. I think women in sport lately have been going through a tough time. I look at you know our very own Khadija Buchanan and Ashley Lawrence on Canada's national hockey, uh, not hockey soccer team. Um, fighting for more equity. Um, the Kelly Graham Mantis. Yeah. Same. Um, but uh, candidates for 60 years, and Mr. Clerk, I'm going to have to revise one of my whereas is to 60 years instead of 50. Um, supporting women's hockey and women in sport, especially young women, mm -hmm. is fantastic. And thank you. And doing it under conditions with change rooms that look like that. Um, and still, young women are choosing the Brampton candidates. And that is where the spirit comes into play and, and the actual spirit that you bring to, to the team. So it's, I can't even imagine what it's going to be like when they get their new change rooms. So that being said, I don't know, Mr. Clerk, so thank you. I don't know, Mr. Clerk, if, it, if, if now would be the appropriate time to bring forward the motion. Yeah, I think it would be appropriate with the delegation. Do we have to receive the delegation first? Yeah. yeah. Well, let me say uh, one comment, Council yeah. Sanders, before we receive the delegation. I just want to thank you for coming forward. I know you've been planning this delegation for several months, yes. and uh, um, you did the research, you did the comparisons to uh, other cities. I thought you brought forward a very thorough um, presentation of why this is merited, um, and uh, you know, we have such a proud history, and I hope that this can be the building block for more success in the future. I wholeheartedly um, support this. Um, we need to rally behind women's uh, youth sports, and I think uh, Candidates is a wonderful organization that can instill positive values in, in youth, uh, the essence of teamwork and hard work, and uh, um, you know, there, there's so many benefits. You know, we've talked a lot around this table about rising rates of childhood obesity. One of the ways you combat that is sports, um, and having great organizations like yours in which young people can get involved. Um, you know, and Councillor Pelleschi is right. You know, Susan Fendel has been a huge champion of, of women's hockey. Um, and I, and I, I am glad that you recognized Hazel as well because, you know, we wouldn't have had women's hockey in the Olympics if it wasn't yes. for um, her work. You know, I, I would uh, get phone calls from Hazel about random um, issues that relate to the candidates. And she'd say, call Fran Ryder, there's this issue. <laughs> um, so, you know, even uh, in... Even when she was 99 and 100, she was worried um, uh, that everything would go off perfectly, an example being the candidates tournament. And so I think we've been fortunate uh, to have um, giants in our community like Hazel and Susan that believed um, in the candidates. And I think it's the very least we can do is, is support this um, request. I do have one um, fair but tough question. Um, is Councillor Keenan's daughter, Tenley, a ringer? Totally. She can be the first one to come to the room. <laughs> um, so uh, that, that may not be relevant to this uh, resolution, um, but uh, she'll be happy to know that we got her into the minutes. Um, yeah. Councillor uh, Santos, uh, would you uh, move receipt of the delegation? Um, moved by Councillor Santos, seconded by Councillor Brar. Uh, all those in favor? Motion carries. And can we bring forward the motion now uh, to the clerk? Oh, Councillor Plushy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so I'm, I like the uh, I like the way this motion reads. Um, I think that if there's you know sponsorship opportunities and partnerships uh, through our through our sponsorship team, I'm sure we can find some. Um, what I'd like to know is you know of the you know 164,000 um, and possibly potentially more. Is there more that we can do? Is there an opportunity where we can uh, bump a wall here and there? Can we make that coach's room a little bit bigger? Yeah. 
I don't know. I can't picture the room. I can't picture what's around it or behind it. Do, you need, do we need to add something? To uh, through the chair, um, with respect to moving the wall, I'm not sure if that could be done, but it would certainly uh, increase the cost. But I know rec staff did meet with uh, the candidates yes. team to move from room five to four. Which is four, four to five. Four to five. Four to five. Uh, to Sorry, find a bigger five space, four. so I think these renovations would be related to that newer, bigger room. So uh, five was a bigger room, and they've moved from four to five. No, five was no. is the current junior room. That's the video that you saw. Yep. The presentation of what we want it to look like would be room four. So we would be flipping those for the public. Okay. Um, so there's still be four rooms available to the public. We're not limiting what other people can use. Uh -huh. We are just flipping based on size because. Um, four is bigger. Four is much bigger. Four can roster 20, five, uh, five can ro four can roster 20, five can roster 17. Yes. Okay. And junior carries 20. Okay. And then uh, can we ask for the, the coach's room? Can we have a look at that and see if we can maybe expand on that? What I did notice of other rooms, they have meeting places mm -hmm. for the girls to go in and, and, uh, and watch videos and, and tapes and stuff. So if that's an opportunity. Yeah, um, certainly. Uh, we, through the chair, we can take that back with rec staff and see if there's other you know uh, areas or rooms that might better mm -hmm. fit can we even potentially if we can potentially create another room and then if four and five are beside each other four is the coach's room five or whatever the numbers are mm -hmm. short-term memory mm -hmm. through the through the chair i think rec staff are pretty amenable to working with uh, the candidates to see kind of based on this motion what kind of most optimal fit is with what we have and with the money that's there mm -hmm. okay <clears throat> so there's there's an exact amount there, but does the sponsorships go into the 164? There's the 164 available plus we're going to look at opportunity for other sponsors. Correct. Yes. So yeah. I, I believe through the motion there, the idea is to start the capital project, have the funds available to be able to do this, then concurrently look for sponsorship opportunities and grants from other and grants from any yeah, federal, provincial, or any other granting organizations. Okay. So the way this is all kind of rolling out, you're not going to probably have this for even next season. You know that, right? That's a tough one. Yeah, yeah we, were, we were hoping Fingers crossed, for, for our 60th anniversary to maybe be able to cut tape. At least just the change. That's a room. fast turnaround, especially because we're only because we're dealing with federal and provincial. Not <laughs> that would be awesome. What's but, the do we know what the total cost, is this too new to understand the total cost of, of what they're just asking? Uh, through the chair, I believe it's the 164, so they'll be able to do the renovations with the 164, with the and 160. then we will look at the same time for grant opportunities to reduce that uh, amount back to the city. So with the 164, they'll be able to start the project. So uh, I shouldn't be asking for more. I think the request uh, from the candidates was for about 164. I mean, we'll never turn I'll never down. turn down more. <laughs> no, no, I'm not asking, but I'm not asking you. <laughs> um, all right. I'm looking at you because you're you've lived this, so you know the facility. Can it be done or what? I can build it eight weeks. Yeah, no, we can't let you. <laughs> So, and I, I believe this proposal has been done in conjunction with uh, working with the city staff. Councillor, you done, Councillor Blush? Not really, but okay. Councillor Santos. Thank you. Through you, um, Mr. Chair. So, there, um, maybe what might be helpful is to amend the motion to say city staff be directed to seek possible sponsorships and partnerships in an attempt to offset a portion. Um, or all of the costs and something in there about additional like and, and any other additional opportunities mm -hmm. to do more something along those lines with that wording as well as the federal and provincial grants and other granting organizations so in in um, putting this together with with city staff through the work that you've already done before for the past few months there may be some federal grant specifically available for things like this, because if you go up to the top of the whereas is, the federal government actually has a um, women in sport, gender equity in sport group, and an actual task force dedicated to increasing gender equity for, for women in sport. So there might be granting opportunities there. 
Um, and any further opportunities in relation to the expansion? For so, yeah. Councilor Santos, just I, I suggest maybe in a, in a fashion that I know the, how slow the federal and provincial governments work. That if they want to contribute, they can, but the project wouldn't be held up. No. Um, uh, depending on that, that is it, after tonight, it's full steam ahead, and that would help with the. So yeah. the so the first part of the motion actually covers that as to um, the chief's point. They can get started with the 164,000, and it's my understanding that it would be a grant to the candidates to begin renovations to cut the red tape and, and the timing. So they could possibly get it done if it is a grant to the candidates yeah. to get it done. As a grant. So if 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 Nash or the staff who were working on this. We, we currently lease that room now. Mm -hmm. You're We're a leaseholder in that current room now. Yeah. So if, right. if. But you're not a not for profit. Yes, we, yes are. we are. You're a not for profit? Yes. yes, we are. All of our money goes back into the girls within our organization. Which is why I've donated the last seven years a total of 35,000 of my own money to give back. Not that the dollar amount equates to anything, but because I believe in what we're trying to do for women in sports. So the motion says, and I can read it, uh, 2023 capital budget be established and including the 2023 capital budget ask pending council approval in the amount of 164,000 to be funded from capital reserve number four asset replacement to provide a grant for the candidates to renovate the dedicated player change rooms and coaches change rooms at Central Gardens Recreation Center in a form approved by community services staff. That is the motion. Okay, the motion. Uh, Councillor Plush, you want to speak to the motion? Um, so I need, I need in terms of process, I need to understand um, who's doing the work for the 164,000. Are we granting this organization 164,000? And my other question, Kelly, is how much money have we given the candidates? this year or chief is it with you for the grants uh, for the Easter's tournament tourism Sorry. and events uh, through the chair I believe uh, where's events now that's uh, it's tourism. yeah that's under Sorry. under Jason at the moment um, so so we can uh, grab that number for you uh, with respect to the renovations through you, Mr. Chair, uh, we, we need to review the, uh, the lease agreement. Uh, we, we were just having a, staff were just having a discussion to see how we could uh, most expeditiously accommodate this work being done. Mm -hmm. And depending on the, on the uh, requirements in the lease agreement, we may be able to just, as Council was saying, provide the grant and let them uh, do the work uh, with their own contractor. But we do need to review the lease agreement to uh, def definitively say yes. Okay. Okay. I'm comfortable with that. Okay. Great. We have the motion moved by Councillor Santos, seconded by Councillor Brar. All those in favor? Motion carries unanimously. Congratulations. Thank you. Let's get that built. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, you so all. much. I really appreciate and it. I would just like to extend thank you very much. And all of you are welcome to come to our Easter tournament banquet if you choose. We would, grad, we would gladly have you there. Not just the details, you details, we'll be there. You guys are cutting the red tape, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Okay, this takes us to our next delegation, which is a virtual delegation from Melkeet Sandu, community organizer from the David Suzuki Foundation in regards to our budget for transportation and environmental initiatives. Malki, you are in the session now. You can unmute your mic and turn on your video if you so choose, and you have up to five minutes to address committee. Thank you. Sorry, I'm just trying to start my video, but for some reason it's not working. 
working. Um, so we can hear you, Malkeep. Okay. So whenever you're ready, All right, I can I'll, start. Okay, I'll just go without my video then. Um, but I wanted to start just by saying good evening to Mayor Brown and Council and saying thank you for the opportunity to speak today. Um, as you all know, my name is Mulkeet and um, I'm a community organizer with the David Suzuki Foundation, but I'm also a proud Bramptonian and a new mother trying to create a better Brampton for future generations. It's been four years since Council declared a climate emergency and Brampton's emissions are still rising. Last year, I watched from my window as the Credit River flooded Credit View Road, damaging trees, roads, and homes in the Churchville neighborhood. To be honest, as a parent, I'm frightened for my child's future. But what gives me hope is knowing that the solutions do exist and there are leaders pushing to implement them. I'm here today to urge Council to be those leaders who give us hope. The 2023 budget could set a strong foundation for the rest of your term on Council. We have less than 20 years to cut our emissions in half, and so I ask you to make this budget count. The proposed 2023 budget is a great start. I do commend Council for making the difficult but necessary proposal to increase tax rates. It's a really hard time for municipalities across the province, and this added revenue will benefit residents in the short and long term. On the topic of good tax rates, I also wanted to address Bill 23. By changing the Development Charges Act, this bill is depleting municipal income and forcing taxpayers to make up for billions in lost revenue. I urge Council to continue to advocate against Bill 23 with the Ontario government. Even with the proposed tax increase, there's still a huge gap in the city's income. I urge Council to also advocate with the federal government for a municipal climate fund and funding for transit operations. Now to the good stuff. Um, I'm excited that Council is prioritizing transit in this budget. And while there is a lot to catch up on, um, Brampton is winning in many ways. For example, while other municipalities are struggling to get folks back on transit, Brampton's ridership is actually increasing um, from pre-pandemic levels. And to meet this demand, the budget proposes increasing service by 6.3%. But I say that instead of just meeting demand, let's create demand. I encourage Council to increase transit, transit service by at least 10%. As David Miller said about transit, build it and they will come. If we invest in a fast and reliable transit system, then Bramptonians will inevitably come on their own. Brampton is also leading on transit electrification. I want to congratulate Council for securing $400 million from the Canada Infrastructure Bank, um, which allows the city to buy up to 450 electric buses by 2027. Given this announcement, though, I'm disappointed that the 2023 budget only proposes 10 new electric buses, but 38 new diesel buses. This would lock the city in for another 12 to 18 years of losing money on expensive diesel when we could be investing in cost-saving electric buses instead. I urge Council to not buy any more diesel buses and to leverage the support from the Canada Infrastructure Bank to buy an additional 38 electric buses instead. I also urge Council to commit to fully electrifying Brampton's fleet by 2040, given the support system that you have in place now. And at the very least, Council should be replacing any retiring buses with Generation 2 hybrid buses, which can now be converted to fully electric um, in the future. Finally, I wanted to quickly address um, the 23 budget's proposal to increase transit fares. Well, I do understand that this is necessary. I do think that we need to support those who are already struggling to afford transit as is. I'm really proud of Council for introducing fare free transit for seniors, but I encourage you to extend this to children under the age of 12 as well. This would set children up to be lifelong transit riders who will pay in the future, making it a long term investment. And I'm living proof of this. Growing up, I took transit everywhere with my mom and the habit stuck throughout high school, university and even as a young professional. And finally, along the same theme, I urge Council to explore creative options to tackle transit affordability for college and university students who are already struggling to get by. Right now, international students aren't eligible for the Peel Affordable Transit Program, even though Brampton's ridership growth is largely fueled by them. It's thanks to international students that we're able to invest in service improvements while other municipalities are being forced to reduce service. 
Some cities have successfully worked with local colleges and universities to build discounted transit passes into tuition fees, and this helps increase ridership as well, but there are a bunch of options that could be explored. And with that, I know that was very long and it probably went over time, um, but thank you for the opportunity to speak today, and I wish you all good luck on finalizing the 20, 2023 budget. And again, I hope that council keeps climate and future generations top of mind in the process of finalizing this budget. Thank you. Thank you, um, Melkeet, and uh, uh, grateful for your ongoing environmental advocacy. Um, we certainly take it to heart in the city of Brampton. It was, after all, uh, Bill Davis that created the first Ministry of the Environment in Ontario history. Um, and we got from the Environmental Education Centre in wards two and six to the electrification of transit to the first electric fire truck. And just last week, I was at the police board talking about electrifying police cars. We will continue to do everything we can to be a leader on, 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 on the climate front. I don't see any questions, uh, but thank you, Mel Keat, for the presentation. Um, Mayor Brown? Sorry? Uh, this is Councillor Tour. Oh, Councillor Tour, okay. Yep, sorry, I, I didn't have the raise hand function for some reason. Uh, just wanted to see if we have uh, Alex online from transit. Uh, he's here. Um, Alex, um, uh, you know, following Milkeet's presentation here uh, um, and in what she says, uh, I hear her, I share the same feelings as well, but I know we, we have limitations to how quickly uh, we can electrify our fleet. Uh, do you do you mind uh, just responding to um, all the all the comments from Milkeet? And uh, through the chair at the council tour, certainly the delegation's comments are are very good comments to have uh, since the emergency climate change that council declared back in 2019. Uh, the city's probably initiated one of the most aggressive uh, transit programs for electrification across Canada. As mentioned by the delegate, we secured a $400 million Canada Infrastructure Bank loan. We are aggressively working with the federal and provincial governments uh, to implement the infrastructure to support onboarding electric vehicles. This council approved the largest global deployment of interoperable uh, electric vehicles, eight of them that are in service now for quite some time. Uh, we approved last term of uh, last budget another 10 electrified vehicles. and. Um, to the delegate's point, absolutely, we'd love to order 38 electric vehicles. However, our infrastructure can't support it at this time. Uh, we've been dialoguing continually with the federal and provincial government and getting traction to uh, getting funding for infrastructure. And as we onboard those in parallel, we will be onboarding uh, electric vehicles. Criticality point is we need buses to move people. Um, and we even have a program where we can convert two, as a trial basis, two diesel buses two electrified buses. If we were successful in that, we can always do a midlife refurbishment to onboard even uh, more electric vehicles at a, at a faster pace. So it's all around the infrastructure. We're working aggressively and you know, thank you to the delegates' comments because they just reinforce more of what we're trying to do and we're probably the fastest moving across Canada. So, so Alex, just the bottom line here, we are doing absolutely the most that we can in terms of electrification. Is that correct? We're moving at the fastest pace on onboarding, th again, sorry, through the chair, on onboarding electric vehicles, uh, but they are contingent on our infrastructure to be able to support them. And that is what we're trying to move on um, with implementation of that infrastructure. And part of our capital program reflects that as outlined in the $210 million uh, capital program that strictly deals with uh, the electrification of our third facility and our Sandalwood facility that are critical components to onboarding more electric vehicles. Thank you, Alex. And uh, on, on that note, I just want to say thank you, Melkeet, uh, for your presentation and those comments. And, uh, you know, we will keep that in mind as we go forward uh, through the years, as we prepare for, um, you know, Brampton to adapt to uh, climate change and meet our goals and targets. That's all. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So we have a motion moved by Councillor Santos, seconded by Councillor Brar to receive the delegation. All those in favor? Motion carries. Um, is, is there anyone else present who would like to address committee? Okay. 
Seeing none. Our next item, Peter. Through you, Mr. Chair. That concludes um, the registered delegations for the Budget Committee. Um, all committee has left is con uh, consideration of the 2023 to 2025 budgets um, and any motions that members may have. So if committee wishes, those could be dealt with this evening. Um, there is two reserved time periods for budget committee if, it, if necessary, Monday, March 6th from 1 till 4.30 and Tuesday, March 7th from 1 to 4.30 with final recommendations uh, tracking for a special meeting of council on Thursday, March 9th at 7 p.m. So um, it's, it's up to committee if they wish to proceed now or wish to um, uh, deal with the items, whatever items may be left on at Monday session. So I believe some members have motions planned for Monday, but if any members have motions planned for tonight, they could do so. I don't see anyone for tonight. In which case we could um, recess. Until, recess until recess until Monday at one o'clock. Okay, yeah. Monday at one o'clock. One o'clock. Yeah. Okay. So motion to why do we need recess? We'll we'll recess until Monday at one o'clock. Thank you to all the city staff who continue to work so diligently on this critical document for the success of our city in 2023. We are.